What's up, Comic Book Nation? We're bringing you the top five stories every weekday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 a.m. Kenyan in Comic Book Now. What's up, Comic Book Nation? Welcome to Comic Book Now. I'm your host, Brandon Davis. Please call me BD. I'm joined by Lucas Siegel. Hello, Angela. I see you in the comments. <laughs> are the comments already flying by? Oh, yeah. Comments Perfect. are flying by. Please give me questions so that we have things to answer after the news. Yes, absolutely. And we have something to give you guys today, so be commenting. But first, our top story today is very exciting for Marvel fans. The first real synopsis for Thor Ragnarok has been released, and no, it... It not only does it offer the first real bit of information about the movie, uh, but it also reveals the Hulk's role in the film. According to the synopsis, Thor will find himself imprisoned on another planet and missing his hammer, while Hela unleashes hell on Asgard with all of its people fearing the end of the world known to them as Ragnarok. Along the way, Thor will battle the Hulk. Given what we know, safe to say this will replace the Silver Surfer versus Hulk scene in the Planet Hulk comics, where Surfer finishes Hulk's sentence and they call each other friends. It was adorable and emotional. Uh, we do have a cool giveaway from Thor Ragnarok coming up after our fifth story, so stick around because you do not want to miss that, all right, guys? And sticking with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, a number of upgrades for Spider-Man's suit have been confirmed. Not only are we going to see the web wings unveiled in the first... Uh, trailer, but the new suit designed by Tony Stark will have an upgraded web shooter with a laser targeting system, a GPS tracking system with a holographic wrist display on it, and expressive eyes. That's pretty cool, guys. Uh, no, before you even ask, though, there is no mention of any Iron Spider suit, and it's not going to be in the movie. Just face it. Maybe a reference, maybe an appearance in Infinity War, but all probably not. Uh, or maybe we can just save it and not go all Zack Snyder and throw it into the first movies. I don't know, just a thought. Shifting gears here, the conversations about the future for General Leia Organa have been getting louder and louder after the tragic passing of Carrie Fisher. Starting next week, it won't just be among fans, though. Lucasfilm will be reportedly having uh, the dreaded discussion of how to handle Fisher's character in the next two Star Wars films after the word just got out that she has a major role in Episode Eight. Now, this, this is going to be very interesting how these talks turn out. Yeah, this is going to be a really difficult discussion for Lucasfilm to have, both because they're protecting the legacy of a beloved character and the legacy of a beloved actress and right. a part of their family. Uh, and I think that's really the way that they're taking things. They want to make sure that they do right by both of them. Right. So it, it'll be interesting to see what pans out. Uh, they have a lot of options on the table. Mm -hmm. We've got the precedent of Rogue One now. Yeah. Um, but do that you was, think there's any chance that they computerize her like they did Tarkin? It's, it's possible. Right. Um, I think a recast is possible. I think rewriting to mm -hmm. uh, try to adjust the script is possible as well. We'll, we'll have to right. wait and see. Right. All right, and sticking with Star Wars again, Episode 8, we got a little bit of news on that. It will be unveiling a bit more of the human side of Kylo Ren, according to Kylo Ren actor Adam Driver. Even though it's very much a blockbuster movie, and I'm aware of that, there was no taking that for granted in that we were forced to be general. Adam Driver tells this to Larry King about Episode 7. You know, there were a lot of points that we knew were operating in the first one that we get to explain more in the second one, episode eight, that kind of make the both of them make sense. Apparently for Kylo Ren, that plot point is humanity, according to Driver. Maybe like how killing your legendary father might affect you in the long haul. Hopefully. Uh, finally, before we get to our giveaway and comment section questions, the best news a Charmed fan can get. The series is being revived by the CW. Yes, the same network that refused to let Constantine die after being con uh, canceled on NBC is bringing Charmed back to cable. The original cast will be sitting it out, but the team behind Jane the Virgin is backing the series. So that's all pretty exciting, Lucas. Uh, Phoebe, Prue, Piper all coming back to TV. Are these, yeah. uh, is the comment section pretty hyped? What are they saying? Yeah, uh, people are excited. Uh, they were curious about whether it was a reboot or a prequel. It is a reboot. So right, right. hopefully some of the, I'm sure they'll, they'll manage to get people right. involved. All right, now before we get to the full comment section part of the show, I have a giveaway. Planet Hulk, we're going to give you guys a copy of this book. And the elements of this book right here are going to be in Thor Ragnarok. So if you want the inside scoop on that, take a screenshot now. This is how you enter. Uh, you, all you have to do, turn your phone sideways, landscape mode, send us a 10 second video telling us who you think is going to win that fight between Thor and Hulk. I mean, I have my pick, Lucas. I want to hear your pick because I want you to lead by example right now. Show us how it's done. Show us exactly what the people at home have to do to be entered to win uh, okay. Planet Hulk. Okay, I'm nervous. No I'm nervous. You got this. Uh, I really love Planet Hulk, so I totally want this book. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Lucas, and uh, I think Hulk will beat Thor and Planet Hulk using the Jeff Loeb method grabbing his hand with the hammer in it and just beating him in the head over and over and over again. Thanks. <laughs> 
That was you were cutting close to 10 seconds. Uh, I know. Let's get that graphic up just one more time. See now you guys take a screenshot of this. Who would win in a fight between Thor and Hulk? Now we're gonna see this showdown in Thor Ragnarok. That link at the bottom. That's exactly how you submit and. We will choose the best entries. We will choose the best ones. We'll review all of them, I promise. We will choose a few of them. We will include them in a show later this week, maybe early next week. I don't know when we've decided uh, to, to run this contest until. But you will be featured on Comic Book Now, and we will unveil the winner. And then we will ship you not only this, but a comicbook.com t-shirt, which, I mean, is pretty. I don't know which one's better. Uh, but all right. Uh, <laughs> after that, that's enough of that. A giveaway is exciting, I know, guys. But I want to turn it over to the comment section. Uh, what are yeah, we talking about Yeah, holy today? cow. You guys are so active right now, and we love, love, love that. So thank you. Uh, please keep on asking away. I'm actually going to start off with a question from Twitter that we received earlier today. Remember, you, can't, uh, you can comment here during the show, but you can also ask us questions on Twitter any time of the day, anytime something comes up. Hashtag CB now. Uh, we're going to go with a, a loyal viewer, Wim Sad Mojo, well. who asked on Twitter, Will Green Lantern appear on one of the DC CW TV series? And how big will the DCEU be? Watchmen oh, is what he really wants to see. So we got two questions in there. I don't think he'll appear in the CW series. I think, I know they considered it with Diggle once. I, yeah, I talked to David yeah, Ramsey and I said, yeah. oh, well, this was a while ago, this is almost two years ago now. Right. And I said, what are the chances that you turn out to be the Green Lantern? And he says, these are conversations me and Mark Guggenheim have had. They're considering it. Right. It obviously didn't pan out. He's got his own terrible helmet. Uh, I don't think we'll see Green Lantern on CW. Now, there's a, there's a chance. There's always a chance. And they've hinted at it. They've they, had they Ferris Air. Mm -hmm. They've talked about Coast City. Yeah. Um, there, there have been little hints here and there. I think it's something that they'll do as like a little Hail Mary, like season nine of Arrow when they're <laughs> deciding whether or not season nine we're wondering yeah. if we're gonna make it out of this season nope season <laughs> nine season nine of arrow is when you're gonna and what see was Green the second Lantern. part of the question the second part is uh, any chance of watchmen in the dceu mm -hmm. anything's possible uh they're they're a big part of the dc rebirth and that whole yeah. storyline and yeah. uh jeff johns will be following it's, up on that like it's gonna later be next a minute year, so. it's gonna be a minute before that might happen yes and if they absolutely. do i bet you they were minor i bet you they play a minor role compared to a lot of the Justice Leaguers. All right, let's All right, go to Facebook one. here, guys. Uh, Jay Carroll just asked, uh, will we see the Soul Stone in Thor Ragnarok? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I can say. Um, There's, uh, yeah, I'm gonna let you take this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, someone had a trip to Australia that might be uh, biting his tongue a little bit. Uh, so I will say this. Um, there's basically Thor Ragnarok, or Black Panther for us to see the Soul Stone, um, unless it doesn't show up all the way until Infinity War itself. Uh, chances are there's going to be some nice Infinity War lead-ins. Look, in Thor all Ragnarok. I'm saying is Thor Ragnarok is the last cosmic movie before Infinity War. It, it sure is. That's, it sure is. Anyway, next, what, we, what else we got? What are they talking about? <laughs> all right, back over to Twitter. I've got one from Elizabeth Amos. Uh, who basically just wants our opinion on the new DC movies and Marvel movies. I know we're getting this question a lot. Um, we're, we've gotten it phrased to us a lot of different ways. Right. So how about uh, we do something a little different? I want you to tell me why you're excited about Wonder Woman, and then I will tell you why I'm excited about Spider-Man Homecoming, two that we don't cover as much. Uh, I'm excited about Wonder Woman because it looks like a period piece, and it's, uh, I mean, it's a female hero, which is cool. It's backstory in the DC universe. It's a lighter-hearted DC film. I'm interested to see their take on that. Yeah. We haven't seen something like that since what Green Lantern, and we, that didn't turn out well. The old light-hearted scenario of World War One. Hey, hey, you never <laughs> know. But it, but seriously, they added a little bit of comedy. Yeah. It seems like yeah. they're gonna add the tone. Uh, I mean, it's the action, and the action looks unlike anything from other superhero movies, which was what made Doctor Strange so cool. Was the yeah. unique special effects and action. Yeah, and uh, Gal Gadot stole every second she was on screen in Batman v Superman. That, she did do that. For sure. She didn't have enough seconds. Uh, likewise, another scene stealer is Tom Holland, who stole every scene that he was in Absolutely. during Captain America Civil War. I think we're going to get a Spider-Man in Homecoming that feels a lot more like a comic book character than we have in the past. And it seems like they're really going to spend time making sure that they figure out who Peter Parker is and then build right. Spider-Man off of that. And right. that's exciting it's to important. me. important. Absolutely. Uh, let's see here, we got Ryan Bender. Ryan Bender's a Supergirl fan, and he wants to know, 
if we're going to see uh, Supergirl in a Justice League movie or in the DC Films universe? Oh, man. What do you think? I don't, I don't, know, if the, I don't know how she would mix into that universe. Like, that yeah. character is so lighter, so much lighter than the, the version. I mean, Superman is a much lighter character than the one we've seen in the cinematics right, right. as well. I, I, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. I think the fact that they brought Superman into the Supergirl was a big, big step for them. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think they're going to want to confuse people. Or like, look at Green Arrow sitting out of, uh, of the Justice League movie. I don't think we see Supergirl anytime soon. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think uh, if you're a big Supergirl fan, Ryan, there's going to be a really, really, really cool story for Supergirl in Injustice 2, the next Injustice video game. Very cool. And the way that they have it set up is Supergirl is actually coming to Earth after everything that happened in the first Injustice. So Superman's already gone nuts, taken over the world, and Supergirl comes in then. Nice. So that should be really cool. Nice. Uh, let's pop back Such over to a Twitter. Gamer, that Lucas Siegel. Yeah, man, I'm a gamer nerd. It's it's true. It happens. Uh, over on Twitter, Mikey nine six three three. What's up, Mikey? Asking us, do we think we'll get a solo Hulk film? That's a good one. That's a good question. Um, I think Thor Ragnarok is going to be the closest thing to a solo Hulk right. movie. I think just like how Captain America: Civil War was Iron Man four, this is the next Hulk movie. They cannot. Marvel Studios still can't do a standalone Hulk film yeah. because. Universal Studios and Marvel Studios still share the rights. Right. So it would have for to come solo from Universal. Movies. Right, for solo right. movies. Right. So it would have to come from Universal Studios. And I don't see that happening anytime soon. I mean, Disney made like $7 billion at the box office last year. Can't they just pay Universal Studios off at this point? Come on. Well, they only have a certain <laughs> number. They, it's, the time's going to run out. They had, I think it was seven years from the last Hulk movie till the next one before the rights just revert. So... On the bright side, if they don't make a solo Hulk movie in the next, what did it, when did it come out? 2011? 20, 20, yeah, 2011 yeah, or earlier? Little, yeah. In the next couple of years, the rights might be going earlier home. That, if yeah. It's, yeah. All right. Uh, we got a, a ridiculous question that we just have to answer uh, because we happen to have just found out the answer to this question. What's this? Reese Williams wants to know who would win in an arm wrestling match, BD, Lucas, or Chris Kelly. Oh, wow. Well, I'll, I'll say I actually sat out. But we just had a, a tournament today. Yeah, we had a, that did just happen. That's, that's actually, I didn't know people were taking pictures at that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I will say I did lose to Chris Killian. Yeah, yeah, Chris um, won. He was, he was pretty slimy about it. He's a sore winner. Yeah, uh, yeah. Look. And I, I, I will say that uh, you guys could probably both beat me in an arm wrestling match. It's actually the reason we, you know what, we bet on it, actually. We, <laughs> we, we bet a haircut on the at wrestling match. All right, I got I to gotta go to Angela Lopez, our, our buddy, our pal. We love you, Angie. Uh, Angela wants to know why Groot went from talkative in Marvel Comics to just saying, I am Groot. Well, uh, the thing about that is that in the comics, it's translated. No, so I'll, 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 I'll grab this real quick. Okay. It's, it's a, a little com Marvel Comics history here. So Groot, his first appearance, he wasn't really Groot. He wasn't Groot that we know and love. And basically, when somebody decided to start using Groot again, they just kind of completely changed the character. It's not the only character that's, that's happened to. But in the recent comics, the it's Age. translated, isn't it? Uh, sometimes, the speech yeah. bubbles are translated for my one of One of the best uh, situations we ever saw was young Jean Grey met Groot. And so she was translating ah. telepathically yeah. for when he said, I am Groot, one time. It was like five paragraphs of text. It was amazing. <laughs> It was a lot of fun. All right, All right let's see. Uh, yeah, a couple more. The, the questions are just going uh, crazy here. This is so much fun. Jay, Carol, you are so hyped for Thor 3. I love how hyped you are. Um, I'll, I'll answer real quick one of your other ones. Yes, Surtur. Surtur is in Thor 3. Uh, we've, we've seen the, we saw a concept art of Surtur. Who do you at, think is playing uh, Surtur? Ooh, gosh, I don't know. Hopefully Scott Eastwood. <laughs> hey, I got Scotty Eastwood for everything. <laughs> let's, take, a, let's take two more. Should we? Should we remind everybody how to uh, how to win this? Real yeah, quick? absolutely. Please viewers. do, guys. Real quick, uh, we have a graphic for you. I want you to screenshot it as soon as we can pull it up. Uh, we we have this Planet Hulk comic book to give away in honor of today's news. The synopsis from Thor Ragnarok. Go ahead and screenshot that. I'm going to explain it to you right now. Send us a 10 second video in landscape mode. Hold your phone sideways, or we're going to turn it off. 10 seconds or less, let us know who's going to win the showdown. Thor and Hulk, they're going to fight in Thor Ragnarok. Who do you think wins? Tell us why. Less than 10 seconds, you will be featured on Comic Book Now in the best response 
will receive this not only this copy of Planet Hulk, but a comicbook.com t-shirt, which, I mean, that's valuable. Fire up oh, eBay, yeah. pay your rent with that comicbook.com <laughs> t-shirt, guys. And they come in all sizes. All right, guys, we're going with one more question. I like this one. Uh, Jason Kaltz wants to know, uh, he wants to see Riddler in the DC Films universe. Uh, any, any chance? No. Yeah, well, you, who do you think Scott should Easton. play? Oh, Scott. <laughs> Scott Actually, I did, I did a story the other day, about, uh, not the other day, a couple of months ago now, about who should yeah. play the Riddler. Neil, pa Neil Patrick Harris yeah, wants to play the Riddler. Yeah, that could be interesting. Do I think we'll see him? Is that the question? Yeah, yeah. We, I, we can I go mean, with we've both. seen Easter eggs of him already. We right. have the question mark in BBS. Yep. Uh, I think it's inevitable. I don't think we'll see. We might. Get, I bet you we get a big solid reference to him in the Batman. It'd be it'd, it'd be, be cool fun to see him in the Batman. For sure, for sure. It'd be fun if the Batman did a little bit of the gauntlet running. Some of the best Batman stories. Uh, <laughs> my second Jeff Loeb shout out of the day here, but some of his really good Batman stories, like Hush and Long Halloween, right. include Batman fighting basically everybody, and uh, that could be. A well, cool I mean, that take could very well film. be what happens to the Batman. I mean, Deathstroke could rally the Arkham group. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for your comments. Please go ahead and keep uh, asking them away in there, and don't forget to tweet at us with hashtag CB now. All right, guys, and that's all we have time for today. So since the comments are still coming, I will instruct you to Twitter. Send them our way, <laughs> at Lucas Siegel, at Brandon Davis BD. We love talking to you guys, so keep the conversation going. I hope somebody takes home this copy of Planet Hulk because I already read it. And we'll be doing this every weekday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Thanks.